Good morning, um, everyone, or good afternoon for those of you on the East Coast. Welcome to the A to J Author online intake series. This is Dina with the Center for Access to Justice and Technology. Before we get started today, I want to let you know that you are all on mute. If you have a question, you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Or if you have um, a question and you are listening through your computer speakers and don't have a microphone, you're welcome to put your questions in the question box and I'll do my best to get those um, as we go along today. Also, if you are calling in and for us to be able to hear you, we need you to enter your audio pin. If you're having any issues hanging up and dialing back in, um, you typically fixes those things. So this is part three of our online intake series, and we're going to be talking about editing a script and managing the variables for your online intake interview. If this is your first time with us today, we've already done part one, which was a general introduction um, to online intake using A to J Author, and part two where we talked a bit about um, project management and the people that you might have involved in a project like this, and that we had a guest speaker, Cynthia Vaughn um, from Ohio who spoke with us about that. Um, so those are available on a to if you missed part one and two. And so we were going to get started today with part three, editing the script and managing the variables. So first we're going to talk about ways to create and edit an online intake script, how to use a to j author to create an editable script, um, managing the variables, which becomes really important um, after you are completed with the script creation, but we suggest starting while you're creating your script. We'll talk a little bit about additional resources available to you. So when you're first starting creating um, from scratch or maybe you've borrowed from another organization, which we do highly recommend, um, we suggest reviewing the script and getting input from all of your key stakeholders up front. So when we talked last, um, two months ago now, about project management and the people involved, everyone is going to want to see what it looks like and have some input on types of information you should be gathering, questions you should be asking, or places where you might redirect people. So it's really good to get them involved in this part of either the creation or editing of a borrowed script right up front. Um, it doesn't necessarily always happen that the person who's creating the script is the same person working in A to J author. So we suggest that you edit the script outside of A to J author first and then if you're passing it on you can go back or the person who's um, then creating it can easily go through and cut and paste the text into the software. It is definitely easier to edit all at once in one um, format either Word or Google Doc or something like that than going through a screen by screen and having everyone comment to make edits individually in A to J author software. So a few suggestions we have for doing this is use a word processor like Microsoft Word or a Google Doc and then share this with all of the people involved in your key stakeholders. So here we have an example. Um, the one on the left is Google Doc actually that Utah used and they worked with us and we would go back and forth and they would leave comments in there, cross things out, highlight things change links. They had started with a script that was another programs. And so they were able to edit and make changes and leave comments for then the person who was going to be putting the information um, into A to J author or editing the interview from A to J author because they started with an original. Um, again, the one on the right here is actually one from um, Ohio and they used Microsoft Word and they left comments. And so then you could see who left the comment. You could ask questions to other people, pass it around that way to all the key stakeholders so that they can get to it in their own time. Um, it might be a little more efficient than having everyone in one room talking about things for hours on end. Um, so just a few suggestions there for getting started with your script. Things to keep in mind to do from the beginning. We also could use a table or a spreadsheet or a Google Doc, again, is a different format when you're doing your script or maybe when you're later reviewing your script and trying to get some of those final comments from the key stakeholders or even doing any testing. So again, we have an example of a Google Doc on the left side here, um, which was from Utah that we used, and we actually used this when we were doing testing. So as they would test, they would leave, um, if they found any errors or things that they would like to change, they would say which question it was, what to change it from, and what to change it to, and then there was also a couple columns for other notes. And the item I have on the right here is something that I use in um, our office at the Center for Access to Justice and Technology. We are located at Chicago Kent College of Law, and we work with students a lot creating interviews for local legal aid organizations. Um, 
We also have a course that we are now expanding and accepting um, projects from other organizations if you're interested. And I always go through and I create this, um, what I call a testing report for my students. And I create one column with all of the questions, and then the next column I have suggested text, meaning just replace what you have with this text. And then my third column I have comments. A lot of times I'll ask questions, do you really need to include this or why, maybe you need more explanation here. Um, so just another way for you to track these changes outside of the software, especially for people um, who are unfamiliar with A to J author. So you could pass this around to a group of people that have never learned A to J author, but they would have input on every single screen of text that is going to end up in the interview. Now, if you have a group of people who all know A to J author, or maybe your person working, or a couple of people that are working on the script development know A to J author very well, something else that you could do is open an interview, and this would either be once it's already created and you're making changes, or this would be if you're starting with another program's interview. If you found a program that has something very similar to what you want, then open that up in A to J author, save it as your own, and then just go through and start making the changes that you need. But one thing to keep in mind is this design notes area. So when you're going back and forth and maybe you have someone review it in A to J author so that they can test the screen in preview mode, they can leave comments in the design notes. They can ask questions, do we need this information? Was this fixed? I found an error here. And then the person who's actually doing the updates or the changes or the creation of the guided interview can just click through from screen to screen and see if there's any design notes and make those changes and not have to go back and forth between um, maybe an outside document and the A to J author software. So any of these ways are great things to um, start with. So just keep in mind of getting input from everyone involved up front definitely can save you time in the end. Although by no means does that mean that you're going to get through this in one round. I can guarantee it. So there's always going to be changes. Um, and just picking a method, either using a Google Doc or a spreadsheet or the design note area, and getting your team familiar with this process from the beginning makes a very efficient um, either review process as you're going on or when you're first creating your script. So you might be wondering, how do we get that script if we have this interview that someone has shared with us, it's a .a to j file. Where does this script come from that I keep talking about? Well, a to j author has a great feature. It's on the reports tab. So you have the option here, you can either get a full report or a script for audio. And these will give you a list of all of the question text in A to J Author. Um, it opens it up in a browser window for you. You at that point can um, select all, save, open a new document, and paste things in, Google Doc, Word, something like that. Um, we suggest if you're just looking at this for the script portion, meaning just the text that appears to the end user, use the scripts for audio. That includes only the text text, but it includes all of the help text, any pop-up text, anything of that sort where the end user is going to be reading the text or potentially reading the text. A uh, full report is also great, but it includes a little more information and maybe more than what you need when you're developing a script or reviewing um, your interview with your key stakeholders. It includes the metadata that you have included on the interview tab. Um, it'll include a list of all of your variables, which this might come in handy later. Um, it includes a list of the steps and um, just a little more details of the questioning and things like that. So go ahead and play around with both of those. Um, like I said, if you click either one of those buttons, it's just going to open a browser window with all of the text in it. You can save it, you cannot save it. So no harm done if you want to um, open an interview and try that out. So um, something to keep in mind, and like I said, you can select all put into a document, um, and then this is actually what the the script will look like. And this was a script for audio. So you can see here that this was an Internet Explorer window. And up top in bold is the step name and number, and then the question text. And then you can see here this question actually had a pop-up, meaning that there was an underlined word in the question. and that opened a new little definition window. So you can see here the words that were underlined um, as well as this is the word that was underlined, and then this is the pop-up text that shows up as the user clicks that. Um, down here in this area at the bottom, this would be if you use the learn more area. This is the question that was put in, and then this is the information that pops up when the user clicks learn more. So you can see the script includes all of the text. 
I uh, skipped over the field prompts. Field prompts are the information that um, appears to the end user when they try to get past a screen when there's a required answer. So you can see here if maybe your program has a customized um, prompt that they would like to use, or maybe you would just like to customize a few of them accordingly. Um, that information shows up here as well. So this script is very handy. And again, this was a script for audio, so you don't see all that other information that I was mentioning, like the list of variables, um, any of your field lists that you've attached, so like the list of states and things like that, those would appear on a full report. And this is just a script for audio. Whoops. Um, so actually, let's go into A to J Author so that you can see what this looks like as we do it. So this is Utah Legal Services Online Intake Interview. If you haven't seen one before opened on an A to J author, you can see they're large. These are some of the biggest interviews that you might come across. Um, so the reports tab over here on the left column, and then all we're going to do is create a script for audio. And you can see it pops up right away with all of the text in here. Um, all of the links show up, so you can test those and make sure that those are correct as well. Um, any of your field prompt information, your help text, everything shows up in one um, nice document. So what I do, and I actually have an example, is that I usually select, uh, whoops, let's go back to that. I usually select all of this text copy it, and then I open a Word document. And this is an example of one that I used for a student previously. And now you can see that I have my questions in a table in Word. Um, so just a little tip, I'll show you how to do that. So this one was already created. Let's start a new document. I have selected that text from my script um, already to copy. And so I'm just going to paste it in. Oops, and we're getting more than one page here, but that's okay. So we can, actually what I do then is select everything in the Word document and under Insert tab, Tables, I convert my text to a table. I always just choose one column and then I add however many columns I'm going to want. So you can see that this put this into one column of a table, everything broken up into rows, and then I typically just add another column. So you might want four columns for different comments or maybe for each person that's going to be reviewing it. Um, so you could see here, and so now I can just leave like a comments column, and then your reviewers can go through on this column on the right and add in any comments or updated language that they want. So that's an easy way to quickly get your script out of that browser window from E to J author to some place where you can edit this. And again, you could paste this into a Google Doc um, or a spreadsheet all the same way by just selecting all of that content um, from that browser window that opened and pasting it into whatever editable document that you have. Okay. So that's your script. So we also want to talk about managing variables at this point because it's something that you need to do from the beginning. So the way that A to J author is going to get that information from the end user into your case management system is through those variables. So this is something that if you were on us with our first um, training session, you've probably seen before. So it starts with the A to J guided interview. And when the end user hit submit, all of their answers are stored in an ANX file. Now that file is written in XML and that might not be the same language that your case management system reads. So in the ANX file we have the variable names from A to J author with all of the values. So at some point you're going to need to either create on your own or hire someone to create an XSL transform which will then take those answer files and transform it into the language that your case management system can then read. So then all of your information can get into your case management system in a holding area um, for your attorneys to review, do conflict checks, um, coding, and things like that. So the way that this happens is that transform is going to match up the variables from the variable names that enter an A to J author and match them in a language that your case management system can read to the variables that your case management system already has. So you can see how this could become quite a mess if you don't get a handle on this right from the beginning. So we highly suggest creating some kind of spreadsheet. Now this is an example of a Google Docs spreadsheet and what the main important information that we want to make sure that you track the whole time is that this is the case management system, far left column, the case management system's variable names. 
are in the far left column. Now you've probably already had your case management system, so you don't want to go back and change all the variable names according to an interview that you may have borrowed from another program and has a different type of variable names. Um, so if you're starting everything from scratch, this might not be as big of a deal. Um, but we suggest for efficiency's sake um, that you start and borrow other programs' interviews if you can. So in this spreadsheet, you can see they're keeping track of the case management variable name in the left column. They actually left themselves a description of what that variable means, because a lot of times it's very much abbreviated. And then they left a comments and questions um, column for themselves, just for future information. And then the A to J column, which is the second from the right, has all of the variable names that were used in A to J author. So that you can see as you go across one, col one row, so if you can see number seven here is P code. And if we go across in A to J author, the variable name is problem type MC. So this is something that you should do right from the get-go. Open your case management system, create a list of your variable names, and then if you have borrowed an interview from another program, go through and type in all of your matching variables. This is something, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, if you do a full report in A to J author, it will give you a list of all the variables. So you could very easily have all of um, the variable names listed out for you for whomever is going to be creating the spreadsheet to try to quickly match them up. But you want to double check and make sure that you are coordinating the appropriate variables from the A to J interview in with the appropriate variables in the case management system. Um, so we also have an example of one of these that um, I don't think I have open right now. Let me see. No. Um, so there's also a way that you can do this. Let's actually go to ajauthor.org. Let me close this one. AJAuthor.org, um, we have a list of resources on here, and Ohio has created um, an Excel spreadsheet that they use for doing the same thing, and they called a variable mapping spreadsheet. So you can access that spreadsheet. I actually just got an updated version um, from them today, so it's not linked on here right now. Cynthia was having everyone email her if they would like the spreadsheet. Um, so you can see how that works. Actually, I can open it for you here. Um, and so this is just a generic version of their Excel spreadsheet that they use when they're tracking variable names. So they actually have their A to J variable name in the far left column, and then their PICA, which is their case management system variable name. And then they've chosen a couple columns of other information that was important to their program. So you can see here in this example that it's the, there's no one way to do this. You know, create a couple columns of information that you think is important to you. You might think of something to add as you get started, or someone might mention, you know, hey, can we leave a notes column or, you know, something like that. But there's many ways that you can create this. We just highly recommend you do it from the beginning. It'll save yourself times um, and confusion at the end when you're having that person do the transform that gets your information from the interview into your case management system. So I will get this posted on a to jauthor.org so that you can download it um, from this page here. Okay, um, so actually we're already at additional resources. So let's go back to ajauthor.org because I want to make sure that you guys know about this page for online intake if you're getting started. So from the front page of ajauthor.org where you can see current announcements and upcoming trainings and events, um, right here in the main user menu, we have online intake. When you click that, it goes to our online intake page. And I just recently did a little bit of reorg on this page. So um, you can see all of the trainings that we've done for this series. You can see part one, there's the recording and the slide presentation, and as well as part two. And if you have any follow-up questions on those, you're more than welcome to um, contact me about that if you were unable to attend those sessions but do have any follow-up questions. And I'll be posting the information for parts three, four, and five as we go through this series through the year. There's also some great information that the community has put together that you might find really helpful um, in not only drafting your script and managing your variables, but just from the whole process of getting started. Um, so Cynthia Vaughn, again from Ohio Legal Assistance Foundation, put together a guide 
an introduction to A to J Author Online Intake and how to get started, the development process, the different phases. And she's been doing project management um, with online intake projects for the past couple of years now. And they're actually doing a Spanish version this year. Um, so she's had a lot of experience and has kind of you know, documented that for you there to help you get started with your own program. There's also a list of other legal aid programs with online intake that Legal Aid of Western um, New York put together. And if we click this, you can see all of the organizations. Um, it's a Google Doc. They're here. So I don't know for sure that these are all, and I could probably say that you know not all of them are using necessarily A to J Author as their interface. Um, but this would be a great place for you to go to see if they are, and if you want to use A to J Author, click around their online intake interviews and see if it kind of lines up with what you were envisioning. And then you can contact that organization and ask to use that um, as your starting point for your own project. And um, as a shortcut to that, as opposed to contacting the interviews, the organizations directly, we actually have some organizations that have shared their interviews with us for the whole community. So we have examples of online intake interview scripts. These are in um, Word documents so that you can just see all of the text and you can interview. We actually have one that shows with comments so that you can actually see how the review process worked for them when they were creating their online intake script. And then the sample online intake A to J guided interviews. We have um, Western Ohio Legal Aid Society of Columbus and Utah Legal Services that have all completed A to J guided interviews as their front for online intake. And these are the actual intake interviews. So these are A to J documents. You just save them to your own computer, open them with A to J author, and you're up and running. You can see all the programming behind it. Um, all of the text that they've used, export your script, and get started right away with these. So we're very thankful for programs that are sharing their interviews with us. If you've done one or you're in the process and when you get done, we'd be happy to share it with everyone else as well if you wanted to send it to me. Um, and then again, at the bottom here, we have that variable mapping spreadsheet that I'll try to get up today. So I think we are about, also I do always like to mention the LSC, if you are an LSC funded program, they have online intake specific policies and compliance consider, um, considerations that you should be aware of. I know they were updating their policies um, and going to come out with a document about that. Um, and I don't have that linked here. But this link actually goes to a presentation that they did at the TIG conference this past January when they were starting to speak with everyone about online intake and their policies. So just be aware that if you're LSC funded with an LSC online intake project, make sure that you are um, up to date on their policy. And so that's actually everything that I have for today. Um, if you guys are interested in or have any questions in other areas, let's get some, let me check the question box, or please feel free to raise your hands and I'll unmute you. Okay. So we had one question about how to get um, the information out of AJ Author into a Word document, but we covered that. Um, oh yeah, so Craig Harrison is on this call today, and he's from Utah, and this is something that we ran into a couple places with his interview. Um, we had some fields that we were adding things up together um, throughout the A to J guided interview for Utah. Um, so we can go back to the question list here. So in some of these questions towards the end, um, these are things that you can do in the background. So you have to kind of think ahead of the information that you're gathering in A to J Author. Some of it might not necessarily need to go to your case management system, for one. So you might actually have extraneous variables in A to J Author, and it's okay that they don't line up um, or have a matching component in your case management system. They might just be used to direct someone down a particular path um, or to decide display or not display a certain set of questions. Um, but with the Utah interview, we were actually created a few, um, they created a few notes categories in their case management system for extraneous information that they collected in the interview but didn't have a specific place for in their case management system. Um, and I believe it is this question 7-1-B, if we go to the advanced tab. So you can see here in the advanced tab, or actually we left ourselves a note so that we could remember later what was all compiled here. So we were adding up 
other bits of information into one variable that was then passed into the case management system. Something that we ran into was with the um, case management system was had a limitation on character counts for the field, um, for each field in the case management system. So that's just something to be aware of, the amount of information that you're gathering from an end user, where that's going to go in your case management system, make sure you're aware of any limitations. You might run into this problem with an open-ended um, sort of question towards the end user. You might give them an, a, a, an ability to explain um, something further in their own words. So if you have a limitation on a field in your case management system, make sure that you create a coordinating um, limitation for that open text field for your end user and or also make sure that if you're doing some advanced tab um, work as we have here that you're aware of those limits um, because we didn't find that out until later when we were testing um, so it's something that's a great thing that thank you Craig for pointing that out for others to be aware of so does anyone else have any questions um, about getting started or okay we have a hand Hi, David. Do you have a question? Yeah, Dina. I just wanted to mention that um, LSE hasn't released any uh, additional guidance on okay. online intake. We do, I think, plan on doing that, but uh, as of now, that hasn't been released. So I think the, the best thing for grantees to do would be to continue to follow um, what has been released. And if anything additional comes out, I don't think that would contradict anything that we've uh, said so far. It would be more of a simplification of the uh, compliance requirements that have already been, been uh, put out there. Great. Thank so you. I just wanted to let no, that's know good. That. That's good for the update. So this is um, David Bodenbrake from LSC for everyone else who's on the call. So that's great for the update. Thank you so much. And actually, um, our next session, I believe, in two months, um, we've invited LSC to participate in that. So the, they should um, be maybe providing yep. a little more details to everyone on that call. So. Yep. We still hope to do that. So I'll great. be in contact with you shortly. Thank you. <laughs> Um, are there any other questions about um, script creation, editing, using A to J author in these ways, um, or any other questions that you have? We do have a few people on the call who have done these things, so if you're getting started and you have any questions for them, or maybe you're in the middle of the process, or you have some stakeholders asking you questions about how it works in the end, um, please feel free to ask. This is definitely a place where we can share with other people the experiences to learn from. Okay, so August is generally a quiet month, so we do have um, a bit of a smaller group with us today. Uh, if you have any questions in the future, um, well, let's actually go back to ajauthor.org um, to make sure um, there's information on here. Again, so remember to use this, all the resources. We also have additional trainings and presentations on just A to J Author in general. And these are recorded trainings from past new users or advanced users um, and some slide presentations and things. So be sure to use these resources. Um, and then let's see what else we have. Oh, so the next two parts of the online intake series. So the next part we're going to talk about up and running. Where does the information go once you get it out of the A to J guided interview? And this is where we're, we have invited LSC to talk about their policies. You know, this is information that they have not accepted people as a client yet. So there's some delicate things to set through um, there. So please join us for that. And that will be October 20th. And then our final part will be wrapping up with all things technical. Um, so this, if you have a technical person that you're working with that maybe works on your server, on your web server, things like that, um, this would be a great call. Invite them as well. So we're going to talk about where to host your A to J guided interview. Most programs are hosting these on their own web servers. So they're not using Law Help Interactive because there's no hot docs component and you don't need that hot docs server software. Uh, we also talk about um, Transform in a little more detail. Hopefully John Mayer will join us for that call as he has in the past, December 15th. Um, and we'll wrap up the year with how to get everything launched for your program. So please join us for both of those. And then here's a list of our other upcoming training events. As we've mentioned, new user workshops, first Thursday of every month. We talk about individual pieces of the software and go into a little more detail to learn about that. 
the advanced user forum, we talk about more complicated things. Um, we always invite people from the community to share at that. Either bring things that you're stuck on or show off what you've done. Um, we love that, how much this community shares in every way possible. And again, online intake series, the next meeting will be October. So that's all we have today. I don't see any more questions or hands up. So I want to give a shout out to Callie because they are um, hosting us with their go-to meeting services, which is why everyone had to re-register. Um, but thank you for that, Callie. And if you have any further questions, um, or again, if you go back and watch some of those videos that are previously recorded and have questions, you're always welcome to contact me. And here's my contact information. So thank you all for joining us today, and I hope that we will hear from you again in October for part four.